What is up, YouTube? This is Red Leprechaun Gaming, and welcome back to System Universe Book 2 Torrent by Sunrise CB. We're on Chapter 53, Spreading Word. After around half an hour of looting, the trio gathered everything that was remotely useful and stored it in their storage rings. In total, it was a good haul. Most of the items they gathered were different weapons used by Torrent's guards. Most of the guards had also had a potion or two on their person that they were unable to use before being killed by Sylvie, so Derek came out well ahead in potions. As Sylvie had not taken care to not damage armor, most of it, especially the chest pieces and helms, were trashed. Still, Derek believed that Brandy could use everything. Most likely, she'd be able to reverse engineer completed pieces and use the scraps as materials. Either way, the armor and weapons would allow her to increase her skills even more. When all was said and done, Derek, Jax, and Sylvie all gathered back at the carriage. Derek had accomplished his goal with Malcolm Torrent now being dead, and it was time to head back. As he was no longer in a rush, the three took off towards the village at a moderate pace. With Jack's stats, along with Derek and Sylvie not going full out, he didn't have to worry about the man keeping pace. Seeing as how he had a short journey ahead of him, Derek decided that now was the best time to confront Alana about the Torrent matter. He still had a hard time wrapping his head around the thought that Alana didn't know about what they did, even if Gerald covered it up so well. While rushing through the forest, Derek took out his red communication crystal. With a thought, he sent his mana into it and activated it. After a short while, someone picked up. Derek, this is Avery. My mistress will be with you shortly. She's attending to a very important matter at this time. Avery's voice sounded in Derek's head. That's fine, I can wait. There's something important that I need to discuss with her, too, Derek responded. After that, the two made small talk while Derek ran through the forest. To Derek, Avery seemed like a decent fellow. Of course, the man held important information close to his chest, and Derek couldn't get him to divulge anything without the man first receiving Alana's instructions. If nothing else, it proved that Avery was a loyal subject. One thing that seemed to excite Avery while talking about it was the training of the two boys, Zack and Lucas. When Derek thought about the two... Or when Derek brought the two boys up in conversation, it was like the floodgates had opened. The man was very proud of their progress, and he spoke fondly of them. I'd like to meet them when I get to the capital someday. The way you talk about them, they must be geniuses, Derek praised. I wouldn't say that, but they're both very talented and very hardworking. There's not much more one can ask of our students, Avery said. Then before Derek could reply, he continued, Oh, there she is now. One moment. Derek, how are you? How is your friend? Reyna is fine. She made it, unless you're talking about Katricia. I'm sure your death sworn has already informed you of her demise, Derek replied. Mm-hmm, Alana confirmed. He did. I wasn't surprised by the results, though you could have made everything else less public. Who knows what Malcolm or Gerald will think when they find out their retainer is dead. Ah, so word hasn't spread. Word about what, Alana asked. Did you hear about Malcolm retreating from the city to go home? Derek ignored her question. Yeah, Stella informed me. She was going to inform you, but she assured me Walter had already done so, she replied. So, what word has yet to reach me, she asked. Word that Malcolm won't be making it to the capital, after all, Derek replied. Won't be making... Did you kill him? I did. I intercepted him on his way to Wilmetta. I'm sure you'll be hearing stories soon. I didn't go easy on them. Nothing came through for a moment until finally Derek heard a sigh. So you went through with it after all. Like I said before, Gerald will come after you, and most likely those close to you. I hope you're prepared. I'll do my best to let you know if I discover a plot against you, but I can no longer hold him off after the death of his family. I'm not asking you to, Derek replied. I'm not worried about Gerald. I'm wondering how you've allowed the man to live for as long as you have, though. What do you mean? Alana asked. Surely, with your resources, you've been able to put together what the man does. You said that becoming one of your death sworn is reserved for the evilest of society. I'm asking, why is Gerald not one of your death sworn? Derek asked. What have you found? Alana asked, confusion in her tone. Gerald is by no means a decent person. I also suspect him of many deplorable acts, but I've never been able to get any real proof. And with him being by the king's side, I would need proof. 
Gerald is a very cautious man with everything he does. Every time I try to find something on him, the person committing a crime is four or more people removed from him, and it can't be traced back to him. What do you suspect him of being a part of? Derek asked. There are many things that I suspect, but none that I have been even close to proving, she replied. I suspect he's been the accessory to many murders of nobles that have acted against him. Unfortunately, he's so patient that it's years before those nobles suffer horrible fates. I've had people trace those murders, but they always end up dead at the or they always end up at a dead end. Anything else? Derek asked. Of course, Alana said. He has his hand in so many markets that there's no way he doesn't get them dirty. Markets that I would avoid at all costs. It's one of the reasons that I focus mainly on my restaurants. I've built it to the top, so I'm a king when it comes to restaurants. I don't have to follow old traditions or grease any palms. The restaurant business also allows me to gather information easily. Who doesn't like to talk during dinner, she explained. I see, Derek said. When you say markets, do you mean slave trade and trafficking? The slave trade has been illegal for decades, she replied. That doesn't mean there aren't any, though. Sometimes a slave or servant oath is the only way out of a situation, but the great system takes its oaths seriously. A slave oath cannot be coerced, and you cannot give the slave to another. Of course, there are contracts as well, and they aren't nearly as regulated. Derek laughed. I'm not talking about oaths and contracts. I'm talking about slave trade and trafficking. You should know as well as I do that you don't need to be under an oath or contract to be a slave. You only need to be weaker than the person who's oppressing you. Of course, Derek, I'm not naive. Alana's irritated voice came through. What have you found? Gerald is a part of, if not the head of a trafficking ring, and it includes children, he answered. Then he waited. After a while, Alana spoke again. I can't say I'm surprised. I've investigated multiple disappearances of citizens over the years, and they've never led to anything. It would make sense that he's involved because of how well he's been able to cover up his other crimes. Do you have any proof? Just the fact that Malcolm broke an oath to the system by telling me about it before I killed him. Though I don't think anything he knew would hold up against Gerald, especially if he's in your king's good graces. He heard a small bit of one conversation, and that was enough to get him sent to a city in the middle of nowhere, Derek explained. So that's why Malcolm took the city lord position. I tried to find out for a while after the man left the capital, but I was never able to get any actual leads. It all makes sense now, but I can't do anything without proof. If he wasn't one of the king's men, my reputation would allow me to do with him as I please, and the king wouldn't question me. But as of now, the best I could do was tell the king about it. At best, there would be an investigation that wouldn't reveal anything, Alana explained. Oh, you don't have to do anything. I'll deal with him. It's not that I don't trust you, but with your connections and information, it surprised me that you didn't know anything about it, Derek said. Alana sighed. There are few people in the kingdom that are as untouchable as Gerald, but he is. It is the reason I gave you ample warning before. Because of his status, it's easy for him to hide things, and much harder to get information on him. Fortunately, she continued, I am another untouchable, and my strength doesn't come from political connections and other people like his does. My strength is my own. However, a war between me and the royal family wouldn't end well for either us or the kingdom. Unfortunately, my going after the main advisor of the king would most likely start such a war. I know my limits. If he lost the favor of the king, would he lose his status? Derek asked. It would hurt him, that's for sure. However, nobody exactly knows how far his connections spread, which put the king in a blind spot as well. Because of his gratitude, he allowed Gerald and House Torrent to grow to the point where they are. And now they aren't in his control. Not to mention, Gerald is still in his favor, Alana said. The best way to deal with Gerald would be assassination. He is not, a pers he is not personally strong. However, I'm sure he has many safeguards in place in case of his death, so it will be in many people's best interest to keep him alive, she explained. So, what you're saying is that once he's dead, it will be easier to find those who acted with him because they'll be scrambling to save themselves, Derek replied. That may be the case, but it might also cause a civil war, Derek scoffed. That sounds like a problem for your inept king. He didn't hide what he thought about the king. 
He's not a bad person, she tried to explain. No, apparently he's just gullible and inept. All the great qualities one should look for in a ruler, he laughed. That's Alana sighed. Anyways, I'm getting ready to leave for Savannah. There will be... I'll be there in a few weeks. It'll take some time for everyone to travel to Wilmetta for the teleport. Derek prepared to end the conversation. Mm-hmm, Alana agreed. Then her jovial, seductive tone finally broke through for the first time in their conversation. Make sure you take care of Stella on your way. What do you mean? Didn't she tell you? She's decided that she had enough of that city and plans on traveling to Savannah with you, Alana explained. Derek thought back to his last conversation with Stella. I guess she was acting a little strange. They were interrupted by Walter letting him know of Raina's dire situation before she could let Derek know what she was thinking. Oh, I guess that's fine. It's only one extra person if she comes alone. Plus, she can take care of herself. I haven't even figured out how to do the travel arrangements yet, so we can talk about that all once I get back to Tor. Do I still call it Torrents since there are no longer any Torrents in the city, Derek asked? For now, yes. The King or his council will eventually find a replacement and the name will change. Or with Gerald's position, it may continue to be called Torrent forever, Alana answered. Oh, I thought the city names changed according to the city lord here. For the most part, you are correct. However, there are a few instances where the city name stays, no matter the change. Take Wilmetta, for example. The Wilmetta noble family died out decades ago, but the city is named after them in remembrance. The last leader of the Wilmetta family died protecting the kingdom before he could produce any heirs, and unfortunately, all his immediate family was lost earlier on, so the king decided that the city should forever be named Wilmetta, Anna Alana explained. I see. I guess that makes sense, Derek said. I hope that's not the case with Torrenth. We can hope, but I have a feeling it will stick. It'd be best if the Grace Falls could get their name back. The city could become Sea Ridge once again. Walter's son has impressed the king and continues to contribute to, C to Cyandria. It's only a matter of time, if nothing happens to him, Alana said. Walter is definitely proud of him, that's for sure, Derek replied. Speaking of bad things, you should try to get to Savannah as fast as you can. Once everything becomes known, you may have some trouble, so it would be better to get there sooner rather than later, Alana warned. She continued, The city has almost as much power as the capital, and you and your people will be much safer there than any other place. The House Savannah, Natalie in particular, is another of those that are considered untouchable. Nothing happens in that city without her knowing about it, but staying there will be expensive. It will most likely cost even more than you will make through your coffee. I have a few plans for that. It'll take some initial capital, but I should be able to make it. If not, there are other ways for me to obtain a bit of wealth if needed. By the way, what kind of person is Natalie Savannah? Walter seems to count her as one of the few people he respects, Derek said. Natalie is interesting. How Savannah echoes their head based on performance, and that's it. Oh, chooses their head based on performance, and that's it. It doesn't matter if you're the son of the current head, you have the same chances of becoming the next head, even if you're a distant cousin. As long as you carry the surname, you can become the next lord of House Savannah. Of course, being the son or daughter of the lord will have some advantages, Alana explained. You have to understand, while strength is important for House Savannah, it is not what holds the most importance. Business acumen is what they're looking for. House Savannah is the richest noble house in the country for a reason. They could single-handedly supply the kingdom's armies for years. Money equals power for them. If you aren't personally strong, they can spend some of their money to hire bodyguards or even elite teams to run them through dungeons, she continued. I see. So how did Natalie end up in her position? Was she the previous lord's daughter? Derek asked. Far from it, actually. She was a relatively unknown grandniece of the previous lord. When she was 13, she was given a thousand gold coins as a test. Like I said, she was unknown. The Lord had never even met her. A thousand gold coins are the minimum a Savannah gets when they, are, when they unlock full functions of the great system. Most of them blow away the money, then go crawling back asking for more. It's not uncommon for one to lose everything multiple times before learning the trade, Alana explained. Derek listened with rapt attention, not wanting to miss anything that could prepare him for his future in Savannah. 
While Natalie took her thousand coins and began buying random odds and ends she found in the lower city. She even went as far as setting up a stand and buying trinkets from traders who couldn't even afford entrance to the city. Still, nobody paid attention to the little girl buying weird things. That was until it turned out every item she bought had either been misidentified or had hidden properties no one had found previously. Turns out she had a knack for collecting strange items, and when she received her class, she received a powerful type of identify skill, she continued. What happened next? How powerful is the skill? No one knows but Natalie. The only information she's ever given is that it's like identify, Alana said. What happened next? She turned a thousand gold coins into three thousand in a month. By the time she was fifteen, she made upwards of a hundred thousand gold. Also, she did much more than find items no one else wanted. Since she gained enough capital, she opened a small business and started making income passively. And every single person she's hired has been perfectly loyal. She may be better than me when it comes to judging a person's character, Alana said. Is that so? Speaking of character, what about her, he asked. Well, she's neutral when it comes to politics. She could affect the outcome of any political struggle, but she chooses not to. When it comes to illegal businesses, it varies based on which person wins Lord of Savannah. Both she and her predecessor chose to outlaw any illegal trades. If you are caught up in slave trading or forcibly making contracts, she will judge you. There won't be a trial, and she won't send a message to the king. You will just die, and that's after an intense interrogation. I like this about her. Sounds like a good way to make enemies, Derek said. Hmm, like another person I know, Alana joked. She has executed some pretty high-up nobles, almost as high up the, as the ones you executed, she laughed. Remember when I told you if you went against the king, it would end badly for everyone? Yeah. Well, it's just about the same for her. Actually, she would most likely do even better than me. Hell, she may even win outright. Once she buys all the soldiers who aren't under oath or contract, I wonder how many people the king would still have left fighting for him. Derek immediately placed Natalie Savannah on his People Not to Cross list. It was a very small list. It currently had two names. Overall, she's a decent person. She's the highest rated member of the Crown. She's fun to be around and easy to respect, but no matter who you are, when it comes to business, she's able to turn her emotions off. She will never make a deal to her de detriment. Alana seemed to be speaking from experience. There's nothing wrong with that, Derek said. Well, from everything you've told me, Savannah sounds like a decent place to settle for a while. How are the dungeons around there and monsters? I've already learned a bit about that, but it never hurts to learn more. You'll be able to find something to do. There's a few really good high-end dungeons around. You'll be able to find anything from level 75 to 200. Unfortunately, there aren't many dungeons in the kingdom that are above level 200, and none of them are around Savannah, though. That doesn't matter, because you'll finally have access to a teleportation fo formation. There are a couple dungeons I wouldn't mind running. With the right people, she said. I'll be sure to keep you in mind when it comes to them. You'll have to tell me about them later. I keep forgetting that I'll have access to a teleportation circle, Derek laughed. I guess I'll have to change my travel plans. I had originally planned to travel slowly and let everyone have a bit of adventure, but maybe I should speed things up. That would be for the best. Just with this conversation, I've ignored the king trying to contact me six times. Make that seven. Seven times already, so it's safe to assume word has started to spread about Malcolm. Derek didn't know what to say. It was amusing that Alana had been ignoring the king to have a conversation with him. Well, I'm going to go then. Have fun talking with your king. The conversation had already gone on much longer than he planned. Derek heard a sigh from the other end. You know, there's not going to be anything fun about it. Just keep yourself safe. I will. With that, Derek pulled his mana back and released the connection. He let out a sigh and turned to Jax. Looks like it'd be better if we moved faster, he spoke. He accelerated to the speed he had previously traveled with, with Sylvie. Jax lagged behind and couldn't quite keep a pace. I know where we're going, so I'll meet you there if we need to hurry, he shouted, as the distance between the two kept increasing. Derek put out his hand in a half wave. You go to Torrent. I'll meet you there when I get everyone else. With that, Derek rushed forward and Jax broke off in a different direction. And that's the end of chapter 53. I'll see you guys in the next one. Until then, have fun, guys.